Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. I just got out of church and lunch and I was going through my Twitter feed and came across a couple different tweet threads that I that I like to cover. We're going to start here with Jeremy Hogan and he's referring to Perry and Boring's uh, tweet here that says coming soon with this exhibit A. We're going to zoom in here and everyone's talking about what we can see in this uh, the kind of transparent thing right here. It says Bradley garling house that's what it seems like it looks like right above exhibit a and it's kind of everybody's been talking about it so um jeremy hogan says the chamber is waiting in the ripple versus sc case expect something similar to what it filed in the telegram case in the arguments that although the sale of xrp might have been a security the token is not inherently a security similar to johnny deaton just not as compelling so everyone's kind of going through this tweet thread, kind of throwing up a bunch of different things, which is huge, though. Uh, so coming over here, Johnny Deaton pulls up this. Um, he's referring to Stefan Huber here, replying to it. He says, the joke, let me zoom in so you can see. The joke seems to be an absolute running gap, a gag between the Hinman and his uh, buddy Josh, regularly joking about their own corruptness. These people work at the SC. It makes me sick. So he's referring to like... Uh, the emails that we got access to, uh, J Jason Foster and Empire Oversight and all that stuff, all the uh, emails that came out and when we started doing a lot of uh, research behind it. And Johnny Deaton says, a year ago, I was uh, hesitant and careful to not accuse him in of actual, actually breaking the law. Like Charles Gaspar and Eleanor Terrett, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Plus, you shouldn't uh, impugn someone's reputation unless you have clear, irrefutable proof he or she violated the law. He continues... But see yourself, Hemen was warned by the SEC's ethics that he was barred by the financial uh, criminal conflict statute from engaging in any contact with his partners at Simpson Thatcher. What everyone needs to understand is that this was a strict, absolute prohibition. Uh, what this meant was absolutely no contact, no emails, phone calls, lunches, or meetings where his law firm would be present. The law makes it a crime for him to have any contact whatsoever because if he creates, quote, even an appearance of impropriety, it's a violation of the law. Johnny Dean continues, from his SEC emails alone, we can prove beyond any doubt that him and met three more times after this stern warning. Imagine what we might find if we get to subpoena his private Gmail account or other accounts. Yeah, that's a good point there. Obviously, his government account, what about the private accounts? You know, some, there's some nuggets in there for sure. Uh, Johnny Dean continues, he says, my God, the man agreed to meet on the same day a letter was sent from his division with his partner from China during the same time the division of corporation finance was discussing approving the IPO of Canon, a manufacturer of BTC and Ethereum mining equipment, which is super shady, man, because clearly he's going to, without a doubt, him and his law firm and uh, the parties involved, they're going to directly benefit from the Ethereum free pass speech that he gave just with Ethereum in general. But Bitcoin and Ethereum getting the, you know, the free pass and saying that their commodities are not securities. All that did was benefit them. And you can come in here and click on all these documents if you want to check it out. Uh, he continues, he was a profit sharing partner while he was declaring BTC and ETH not securities. For Christ's sake, he was receiving millions from Simpson Thatcher, a member of the EEA. At the same time, he gave Ethereum a free pass. Oh, one second. My buddy just walked in the door. Apologize there. My, my little guy walked in here. So continue here. He goes, ask why the SC is fighting to produce his emails and calendar. Now that we have the emails obtained by Empower Oversight, and that's Jason Foster and Empower Oversight, and we've learned so much more, let me make it very clear with, without hesitation. As a formal federal prosecutor, and he says the uh, SAUSA, or S-A-U-S-A, -S -S I can unequivocally state him and broke the law by violating the criminal conflicts laws of the United States. If he disagrees, he should sue me. Of course. Truth is a complete defense versus defamation. Anyone from the SC who attempts to trivialize his violation is part of the problem. The man repeatedly joked about the conflicts. This uh, this especially goes for Gary Gensler and the SC enforcement director. Uh, so that was that was an intriguing thing. And he puts up this video that we played on this channel. You can kind of come in here and play in it, play it. But that's a good point. So. Johnny Deaton goes from, you know, taking the Charles Gasparino and Eleanor Terrence approach of like, hey, giving them the benefit of the doubt, let's gather some information so we can, you know, without, you know, re without any doubts at all and just like strict hard fact evidence, then you can you can see he kind of transitioned and converted into, no, he broke the law. Like he he clearly broke the law. So things are changing and things are changing fast. And it's, it's I, I can't say fast because I don't want to, you know, 
disrespect the struggle and grind we went through as a community when it comes to when the lawsuit dropped and to where we're at now. But it seems like, you know, all the work that's been done from everybody that's been involved in the community is finally starting to truly gain traction and the wheels are starting to really turn, which is absolutely massive. I wanted to cover this too. It's kind of a long thread, um, but this is um, Johnny Deaton talking about, will there be a settlement in the SEC versus Ripple? He goes, I've maintained for more than a year that the settlement is 100% dependent on whether the SEC must turn over the him and speech drafts and its emails and comments, therefore. Uh, he says, other than having to produce the emails and drafts, another event that could facilitate a settlement is if the SEC receives a disfavorable decision in the library case. So obviously we know if you've been following this channel in the community that uh, libraries getting sued by the SEC as well. I've, been, I've become more convinced that there will be no settlement unless one or both of these things happen. First of all, my opinion regarding settlement is no better or more relevant than anyone else's opinion. The fact that I am amicus counsel places me in no better position to speculate than anyone else or than anyone else. I'm just sharing my observation because I'm receiving many emails and DMs asking. On January 1st, 2021, only nine days after the Ripple case was filed, I filed the writ of mandamus and stated in the petition that the lawsuit versus Ripple alleging all XRP are illegal securities made no sense unless it was filed for one of the following reasons. One, the lawsuit was personal and a form of political revenge for Clayton. Two, the lawsuit was a weapon to slow down adoption and filed for personal gain in order for a select few to benefit financially, which, I mean, it, couldn't it be a little bit of everything if you think about it? And then he goes, three, the lawsuit was filed with such overboard and sweeping allegations, i.e. claiming secondary market XRP traded independent of Ripple are also securities as a form of regulation by enforcement with the intent of coming after all crypto a jurisdictional land grab by the SEC, which, I mean, I feel like it could be a blend of all of it, you know, now with all the information that's been coming out. Um, he continues, Gary Gensler and the SEC are not going to settle until the political risk outweigh the political benefits. Right now, I think Gensler believes that he doesn't have much to lose by not settling. In fact, if the SEC were to win summary judgment in both the library and Ripple cases, it would provide Gensler the validation that most tokens are securities and justification that they must be regulated by the SEC. Right now, the political environment seems to favor the CFTC as a regulator of choice for crypto. Uh, the POTUS executive order gave limited input or jurisdiction to the SEC. Republicans in the uh, financial CMTE, and let me see what that uh, is in particular here. It says the financial services of GOP and Senate favor the CFTC. Cynthia Loomis and Senator, or yeah, Senator Loomis, Senator Gillibrand bills favor C CFTC which a lot of people in the community uh, are definitely in favor of that in relation to the SEC. But me personally, in my opinion, I feel like they need to set up a different branch that's specific and pertinent to this space uh, in, in particular. Uh, Johnny Dean continues, he says, if Gensler were to get a victory in the library case and the Ripple case, he might be able to swing political sentiment towards the SEC. He could say, quote, two federal judges agree that these tokens are securities. If Judge Torres concludes XRP is a security, Gensler and the SEC will sound like today's XRP holder. For two years, we've been saying to the crypto world that if XRP is a security, then every altcoin in existence, with the exception of a few, are also securities, including ETH. SEC refused to settle library, uh, and that's library's um, CEO, Jeremy Kaufman, offered everything except registering today's LBC, their library token, as a security. He offered to dissolve the library company and sell its assets at auction. The SC even conceded that the majority of today's LBC purchasers are users but refused to settle. Ripple offered to settle before the lawsuit was filed and agreed to pay a fine and penalties related to the sales in the early years and with the SEC not agreeing to give clarity for today's XRP. In other words, Ripple would pay a substantial amount of money and live with the status quo but the SEC refused. Furthermore, acting as temporary uh, chairwoman of the SEC, Senator Heron Lee discontinued the use of conditional settlement offers. In my opinion, that was the decision directly uh, directed at hindering any potential settlement with Ripple and other crypto platforms, which is absolutely shady. And we covered it on this channel and uh, Johnny Dean and you know, Moon Lambo, Digital Asset Investor, and all the other you know crypto XRP YouTubers were covering this as well. And it's kind of just shady how everything laid out, how it did. I mean, it was literally a direct weapon in every way. Everything that's happened in regards of uh, uh, the SEC attacking Ripple in, in particular, it seems like it was all coordinated effort to drag it on, drag it, drag it out as long as possible and you know 
and in a sense, they almost were like throwing a Hail Mary and praying that, you know, everything landed in their lap and in their favor so they can, you know, outreach and expand their uh, their control in regards to the space. And when I mean them, meaning like the SEC, which is crazy, John continues, he says, think about it. Why would you do away with the practice that helps facilitate settlements? With the Ripple and library cases pending, the SEC filed the Wahi case claiming nine tokens sold by the individuals are securities. And he's talking about the nine tokens that were sold um, on Coinbase. Then comes the filing of the Dragon Chain case. So we talked about, you know, Dragon Chain was being being sued as well. Just a lot of shady stuff. And then all, what they're doing with these nine tokens and the whole insider trading, they went after the one individual. They didn't go after the Coinbase platforms because they're literally, you know, setting the, the they're laying down the tracks, if you will, for their train or uh, their train to ride on. So they're just laying down everything, trying to get all their ducks in a row so they can have more leverage and power to actually, you know, go after Coinbase or go after some sort of major exchange. It's kind of crazy. Says the CEO of Dragon Chain, after spending two to four million in legal fees over a four-year investigation, was told the investigation was over and he was free. On the eve of the statute of limitations expiring, no longer represented by counsel, the SEC filed the case claiming Dragon is a security. Really think about that. How how dirty and shady is that? Crazy. He continues, there are cases now pending in the first, second, and ninth circuits. In addition to why, Gensler has made clear that the exchanges are next. As I predicted almost a year ago, I, I plan is being executed step by step. And that's what I was just talking about. They're literally just lining up, getting everything, in, you know, their ducks lining and rolling and, and, and making sure they have everything they need to go after a major platform here. Or I guess we could say another major. It says here is a breakdown of the scenarios that will dictate a settlement versus a decision on summary judgment. Scenario one: SEC received a victorious rule from Judge Torres overturning Judge Netburn's order that the SEC, that the SEC must turn over the emails, comments, drafts, and edits. The result: no settlement, summary judgment decision. Odds of scenario one happening: five percent. Scenario two: Judge Torres affirms Judge Netburn's decision and orders documents turned over. Result: the SEC seeks certification for an inter locatory appeal to the second circuit i don't believe judge Torres will certify the sec seeks a writ of mandamus a lot depends on timing if judge Torres rule ruling that the documents must be turned over is very soon it's possible the sec delay tactics could run out of time by the end of the year forcing a settlement if her ruling takes a long if, if her ruling takes a long time the delay tactics run the clock <laughs> which is like gosh man come on you know geez we get that's your only strat, but come on now, you're 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 killing us out here. Uh, he continues. Conventional wisdom is that if library can't get a total victory, we hope the judge splits the baby and says specific sales to an investment club when the platform had only a few videos and users was a security offerings, but the token today is not a security. Everyone needs to accept the fact that if the Ripple or library cases were only about enforcing securities laws, the cases would have settled long ago. This is about Gensler crushing the crypto market in an effort to slow adoption so that the incumbents can get a bigger slice. Boom. I mean, literally, that's what we talk about on this channel, right? This is about Gensler crushing the crypto market in an effort to slow down adoption so that the incumbents can get a bigger slice. So the banks, the financial institutions and, and all of their friends, buddies, girlfriends, I mean, literally anybody in their party in that camp, it's all shadiness and it's for a reason. What do they say? They say, you know, when you missed when you missed the boat. It's like, oh, when the little guy misses the boat, it's like, oh, oh, well, you missed it. But then when, you know, a big player, you know, the one percenters miss the boat, what do they do? They turn that bad boy around, right? <laughs> it's shady. I mean, I'm not laughing at it, but I'm just, it's just sickening that that's, that's our reality. Uh, he concludes here, almost a year ago, I tweeted about Brian Brooks, could, uh, how Brian Brooks was talking about could settle the Ripple case, Ripple XRP case in 15 minutes and spend more time deciding what to eat for lunch. Read how Brian responded. I hope I'm wrong and I'm grossly underestimating uh, the chances for a settlement. So he's talking about this one where uh, Brian Brooks could settle the case against Ripple in 15 minutes. And give, if given the chance, he would find them for some early sales in 2013, 2015, declare today XRP not security, and then spend more time deciding what to eat for lunch that day. <laughs> Crazy, man. I want to thank Johnny Deat and Jeremy Hogan and all, all the people involved with this great threads and this great research. JV, 
there's a lot of great information out there and I just quickly wanted to come on here. I didn't expect it to be this long, but I thought it was super intriguing and important to kind of update you on what's going on. But that's what I got for you. Make sure you come to the Crypto is Key Conversation YouTube channel. Subscribe. Follow us at Crypto is Key 1 on Twitter. I really appreciate your support. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.